no other lens manufacturer can. Cook lenses has this, but it's so heavy. And it costs you 75,000 euros only. Right, so when we design our cinema lenses, we put four things into consideration. First thing is resolving power. The moment you mount a lens into your camera, it eats a lot of power. And that's one thing if you are in shooting in a remote. Because you, can, you need to bring your spare batteries or you need to bring your generators. And this one thing which from Canon, we design them as less power. It doesn't consume much of those power. The next thing is about contrast ratio. Again, high dynamic range. What did we say earlier? You can achieve high dynamic range in two ways. Contrast, contrast reduction, or what, what's the second one? Tone mapping. But you don't need to do that in your computer if your camera and lens can do that for you, isn't it? You can achieve the high dynamic range. So this is the one. So in our lineup, oh, let me finish it. The, the other one is MTF, the modulation transfer chart. What does it mean? To those engineers who understand MTF, as you zoom in or zoom out, even with a prime lens, most of the common fault or drawback of lenses, if you see them in the corners, they are out of focus, right? And this is most the problem of lenses. We make sure that our cinema lenses they are 90%. Even at the corners, they're good. So you don't even have to crop them, especially when you are broadcasting live. People will see the, your content to be as good as it can be. Yeah. And the last one is what we call the lateral chromatic aberration. Um, there, how good the lenses were designed. Sometimes lenses, they have they have the chromatic aberration colors that fringing in the corners. Well, you see magenta color or bluish color, the fringing color. You don't see that in our cinema lenses. We correct them. We reduce them. So what are the products that we're talking that can achieve high dynamic range? We have the C300, we have the C500, all those 4K up there. All those 4K. From C5, C3, 1DC, and XC10. This is the smallest 4K camera that we have from Canon. It's only like this. Yeah, this is this is the XC10. The smallest 4K from Canon. You can put this in a drone. And you're shooting it for photo as well. So, when we're talking of high dynamic range in our C300, we are the only company who uses what we call cinema gamut in the color space. If you look at this chart again, the cinema gamut is the big one there. Yeah, you see there? It occupies all the colors. Yeah, there's, there's a cinema gamut there. That will give you, right from the camera, the high dynamic range that you're looking for. And because this cinema, cinema gamut is propriety by Canon, we can only put that in our Canon cameras. Unless we have to sell this to Panasonic or Sony. Uh, we have another business over there. Uh, if they want to achieve the same. Most of, the, most of the Sony cameras can only achieve the DCI-P3. It's over there. You know, the triangle there, here, bigger than the Adobe RGB. It's good. But in terms of looks and high dynamic range, no. It won't give you that punch. When we're talking of 4K, there are two kinds of 4K. We have the DCI format, which is the 40, 4096 by 2160. And the other 4K is what we call the Quad HD. What this camera can do for you is it records Quad HD, the 31, 
3840 by 2160. That's the 4K. The second 4K pipe. And this, why we use this? Because the TV that you're going to buy commercially is using only this. So if you're doing your 4K content tomorrow, it should apply to what your consumer will be using in their houses. The Quad HD format. Okay. Um, the the BT 2020, there are only two cameras, there are only two brands who are using this. The Ari, anybody who has heard about Ari? Ari Alexa, Ari, yeah? And only Canon, who can achieve the BT 2020. No other camera till date to have this. And in terms of workflow, how you're going to work with your footages tomorrow, it's only Adobe and uh, the Avid that can work with those footages. If you're using Final Cut Pro, sorry, you need to change your workflow. Only Avid and Adobe. This IP3, this is the most common color space we, uh, that even Ikegami, Ikegami cameras or Sony cameras or the Panasonic cameras are using. Um, that's the common color space. That's how big it is only. It doesn't occupy that big space. And this is defined by the DCI and the SMPTE from the US. It's a global association of cinematographers. Right. The other thing when we're talking about high dynamic range is there is a group of people who call themselves ACES. This is the, the next trend in filmmaking or content making. You need to achieve that high dynamic range. And if you want to follow those trends, you need to follow this standard, ACES standard. It's the industry standard that will give you a consistent color experience and it addresses the loopholes of the workflow from the production up to broadcast. It should all match the colors. And this is the ACES workflow. Right. Uh, in terms of other products, we have the two monitors over there, 4K. To give you the high dynamic range, we have the 30 inch and the 24 inch, and then we also have the 4K projector. Um, if you are a producer tomorrow, most of the projector that you will be buying can only project that size, that big size, if you bring them at the back, right? To give that size. In Canon, we have what we call short row. Even if, even if the projector is at this distance, I can still give you that big size. You don't need a big auditorium two times, two times a basketball court to give you the projection size. You don't need to have that. because You need to buy the space anyway. Construct the space, isn't it? You don't need to. We have a projector, even at this distance, will give you that big screen size. That's the power of Canon. So that's it. Uh, let me just explain the 30 inch. And we have the 24 inch. And like I said, to achieve, to achieve a high dynamic range, it should have the bayering process. And right from the monitor, if you want to see, the debayering process of the camera, this monitor can achieve that. Okay, let me start with ENG cameras. The first ENG camera, where is that camera now? It's moving around? Yeah, that's the XF205. Where is that camera now? Let me try to explain it. Can I borrow it? Sorry? Unlike other cameras that you're buying out there, ENG, our Canon cameras 
Once you buy them, you have already a battery in it.